I assume because your mom took you to get it, there was no backlash, you didn't get in trouble. No, no, only from grandma. From you know, grandma gra yeah. Oh, she's like, I heard you got something you're not supposed to have, Joseph. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, what are you talking about, this? And she's like, yes, that. I'm like, and then ever since that first tattoo, every, every holiday I come back with more and more and more. And she's like, Joseph, when are you going to stop? You got to stop the tattoos. I don't like it. <laughs> you think you can convince her to No, never. No. I got a better chance of getting her to eat a pot brownie. My name's Joe, I'm from New Jersey. I work for a small little auto body shop doing estimates in Pensacola. I like tattoos, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I have a daughter, um, two stepchildren, and a wonderful wife. I grew up in a small town called Linden, New Jersey. Good time growing up, had a lot of fun, had a lot of friends, lost a lot of friends, a lot of backyard wrestling. Just a lot of shenanigans, really, you know? Going out, partying constantly, not coming home for weeks, <laughs> worrying my mother to death. My parents were into the whole biker scene back then and whatnot, and we went to a lot of biker parties. So I remember seeing bikers all the time with sleeves, and I'm like, that's gonna be me. That's gonna be me. And <laughs> I guess it happened. <laughs> my mother took me for my first tattoo on my 17th birthday. It was something off the wall, it was, um like this little dragon crawl, crawling up a rose. I actually saw somebody with the same exact tattoo and I'm like, nope, I'm covering it. It's gotta go. The next tattoo that I started working on after that one, it was my leg. Eventually I ended up with a sleeve of, uh, I had a dragon with the wind bars and the cherry blossoms and all that. But then I just like saw an article one day of um, Little Swastika. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, and I just fell in love with the heavy black. You know, so I started working with a group of guys that really uh, I shouldn't have started the blackout work with. They just chewed me up, you know, chewed my skin up all over the place. And then I found the guy that I'm working with now and he's just phenomenal. It's all he does is blackout work. Like 90% of his work is blackout work. That guy is in Philadelphia? Yep. His name is Hood? Yep, yeah. that's his name. And I was, I was so grateful to like, meet him and get in contact with him and actually have the chance to work with him. You know, me and him are actually pretty close. We're, we became pretty good friends. Like, I didn't, I didn't plan on going as big as I did go. It, that's just something that, because I never really planned the whole blackout work stuff out. It was just, I started with my arm and moved to my neck and like, just kept going. It definitely takes a, men like a strong mentality. Especially when, like, sometimes I didn't even want to go back. Like, I'm fighting myself. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go work on this area, you know? Like, this is going to be brutal. Even, even Hood, he, he pushes me every time I go. He's like, 10 more minutes. You got, you got 10 more minutes, and then 10 more minutes turns into 20 more minutes, and 20 more minutes turns into a half an hour. Half hour turns into 45 minutes. I'm like, dude, I was, I was giving up like an hour ago. <laughs> He's like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> Did I have regrets? No. Should I have waited to find the right person to do it? Yes. And that's like the biggest thing you could go for when you're looking for somebody to do something like this. Because your normal tattoo artist isn't going to be able to accomplish something this big and saturated the way you're going to want it and have it come out, you know, without you getting chewed up, you know? Because there's a, there's a certain technique to it. It's not just, hey, it's a coloring book. And like, that's what a lot of people think. Like, I get comments all the time, oh, like a second grader could do that. I'm like, no, dude, not really. But what they don't realize is all the trauma that happens to the skin during all that, you know, and how easily it could all go wrong. Well, the snake represents, like, change, you know, because it says it's skin. And throughout my life, I've had many problems that I've had to deal with, and I've come through and changed completely from it and came out a better person. So I don't think I'll ever cover that on. My first face tattoo is my daughter's name. Was that a big moment for you to tattoo your face? I mean, in some ways it was. It was like, should I do this? You know, is it gonna stop me from doing anything in my life? Um, but no, at that point I already had all these visible tattoos on my neck, on my hands. 
you know, I got like, I had like, do pay me. I really didn't think anything of it. I just got it done and just went along with it and eventually ended up with a few more. <laughs> this is Tibetan, wisdom and intuition. Going through everything I went through in my life and learning from it all, you know? I had a lot of bad issues with substances growing up and, you know, just always getting in trouble, having to, you know, get myself back on that right path. And it's just a reminder, you know? Well, I've always noticed people like looking at me, but what, what gets me is uh, one time I was walking through the mall, I just got my whole head tattooed. So my head shaved and everything and you see everything. Um, and a woman actually grabs her daughter and pulls her away from me as I'm walking by. Now, that's a big thing when you're gonna do something like this to yourself. You have to realize that not everybody's gonna agree with the way you look and there's gonna be criticism and there's gonna be things that you're gonna have to take whether you could handle it or not. So, sometimes that happens and I'm like, damn, like, what's wrong with these people? But, you know, it's just people being people. You know, judging books by their cover. You know, it happens to me all the time. I just wonder, was there a point in your life where you felt like you were no longer just a person with tattoos? Where you become a quote unquote tattooed person? Yeah, definitely was. Uh, and that's when I started forgetting about having the tattoos. Like, I don't even, like, remember I have face tattoos anymore. Like, people will come up to me and ask, like, what's this? And I think they're talking about my neck because I, I forget about these things because I'm, I don't even look, like, I look past all that, you know? Maybe I don't forget about them, the, the shock value goes down. Because, you know, when you first get a tattoo and you're like, wow, like, it's going to be different for a few days. Like, I'm going to have to get used to looking like this, you know? Like, that doesn't really happen that much anymore. You know, it did for a while when I began the blackout. Like, I'm like, wow, like, look how much I've changed in such a short amount of time. And it took a little catching up to do in my brain. But now, like I said, it's kind of like, I just, it's out of, out of my, uh, out of focus, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> if you could start it all over again, you're 17 years old, your mom's driving you to the tattoo shop. Would you do things the same way that you have? I wouldn't get that flash art off the wall, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, but would I necessarily do anything different? I, I don't know. Because like I said, I'm happy with the way things are turning out. And I like the way everything's basically fell into place. Because like I said, there was no plan for this. I basically just said, hoodie, here. Like, I gave them like a basic shape that I wanted to create out of the mess that was created. And this is what we came up with so far. The tattoos you covered, do you miss them? No. Because the ones I covered, I never really finished. They were all works in progress, you know? Like, I worked for a few shops out in Delaware, and uh, like, they, they, those guys started my rib piece. Uh, I had this whole underwater scene with a mermaid and a squid in my armpit, and like, it was pretty wild. But I just kind of grew out of the whole, grew out of it, you know? I grew out of like, just the whole, uh, the Asian thing. I grew out of the whole underwater scene thing. I, I... Do you ever think there'll be a point when you wish that there was something different? I don't think so. Cause it, this is something that I wanted so bad that I worked so hard to actually go out and find somebody that was wanting to take the mess on that I had created of it all. <laughs> the last two people working on me, you know? So no, like, and like, I look at myself in the mirror every day and I love what I, I love what I see. Like I'm comfortable with it all. <laughs>